Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. It's Mickey, and in this video, I want to talk about motion planning and how we can do that in Game Maker Studio. Uh, this is also referred to as A star. So how it works is we have a grid here, and we take this grid and we transfer it into a motion planning grid, which everything will turn green here. Once we have this grid, we can draw some solid objects or solid cells in this grid. And then from there, what we can do is we can loop through this grid. We can then transfer any solid cells into objects. And then we can place down some enemies here. And then we can use the path finding abilities of Game Maker to figure out how it is best to reach, say, the position of my mouse here. So this is kind of what we're going to create in Game Maker Studio. So let's quickly roll the intro and get right to it. All right, so we have our blank project here. Uh, I have a few sprites in here. Uh, this is the project that you'll be able to download. We have uh, an init grid, a grid init, a wall, and an enemy. So nothing is in them yet. I'll close everything except for this grid one because we're going to be working in there. In the room, the only thing I have done really is I've set the object grid init to be in the instances, and that is it. So what we're going to have to do at the very start is we're going to have to create some global variables so our grid can interact with say the enemies or if we were to move walls they could interact with the walls so let's do a create event and in here we need uh let's actually start off with the randomize function just so things will be different uh we need a few different global variables so we'll say a global variable called cell size and we're going to set this to 64. and then what we need to do is we need to figure out the cell sorry, the width and height of the grid. So if we take a look at a room, right now I have this grid turned on. If I turn it on and I set my cell size to 64 by 64, this is what we're trying to accomplish here. And we need to know how many cells are from the left to right and top to bottom. So we can do that with a simple math function. So we can get the cells from left to right using the room width divided by 64, which is our cell size. And then we can do the same for the grid height. We just use the height divided by the cell size. Now what we have to do now that we have the width and height, we need to actually make the grid itself. And we'll do that with a function called mpgridCreate. Now it will accept the top left parameter, the, sorry, the left parameter, the top parameter, and then the cells for the width, which is our global width. And then the cells for the height, which is our global height. And then we need the cells uh, size as well. So we'll copy that in. And the only thing we need to do is we need to store this in an actual variable. So we'll say global.grid and we'll store everything in there. So if we were to run our game, we won't have any errors. However, we won't see anything on the screen. So let's create a draw event and let's draw the grid onto the screen. To do this, we'll set the alpha. So we'll say draw set alpha. And let's set it to 0 0.3 and don't forget to reset it to one afterwards and in here we'll use the mp grid draw command and what grid do we want to draw well that's going to be our global grid now if we hit f5 we can see that our grid is now being drawn so the next thing we want to do is fill up some random spots here to make some objects where they cannot pass through now i'm going to try and keep everything a little bit simple and organized so i'm going to go into my user events and add a user event zero that we're going to call so let's make 20 different cells here so we'll say repeat of 20. And what i want to do is just basically figure out from left to right a random cell and then top to bottom a random cell so we can do that by using two variables an x cell equals a i random range because we don't we need whole numbers not floating so we'll say zero to the global dot grid width and then we'll copy and paste for the y cell and we'll say global grid height so now that we have this information all we have to do is tell the grid that we're going to be adding one cell object to it so we could say mp grid add cell and then it's going to have the id of our grid which is the global grid and then the x cell and y cell now, if we call this from the create event, so I'll say the event user, and we're going to pass in event the user zero, random blocks here. If I hit a five, we should see some red squares now appear on our screen. So these will be the impenetrable walls that we're going to place in. The next thing we're going to do is take these red squares and actually place in our walls. 
So again, I'll create a new user event called user event one. And what we need to do is we need to cycle through this grid and we need to figure out if we've reached a solid object or cell. And if we have, then we're gonna add the actual object on top. So we can do that by using a for statement. So say for VRX equals zero, XX is less than the global dot grid width. Then we increase X by one, or I should say XX. And we are gonna do the same, but the variable we will be using is YY. And this is for the height and not the width. So we'll say height. And now we're gonna loop through our grid. However, we need to determine whether a cell is a solid or not. To do this, we could say if MP grid get cell, and we're gonna use the global.grid at the cell position of XX and YY. If that is equal to negative one, then we know that it's a solid, um, solid square. So this is one of the red squares. It could also be negative one if the grid is out of bounds, but we really don't have to worry about that. So all we need to do is we need to now take the grid cell positions, which is cell X and Y, and we need to transfer them into positions such as pixels. So to do that, we'll use a little bit of math. So we'll say position X equals XX times the global dot grid, sorry, cell size. And we'll copy and paste that for the Y. And that will give us position X and Y in pixel space. So now we can say instance create depth. And I'm using depth here just because I don't have any of my layers set up at the X and Y position. And we will just use whatever depth that our grid in it is on because that's fine for now. And we will want to instantiate the walls. So probably the only thing I would do here is add a description at top. So let's say add walls. And I would also do it over here. Um, initialize the, um, solid squares for now. And then we'll just, it will show in here and makes it a little bit easier. So now we want event one. And if I hit F5, hopefully everything will work. We can see that now the red squares have turned into these wall objects. Now to get rid of that grid, all we have to do is either comment out or completely delete the draw event. So now if we run it again, our grid's gonna be behind the scenes, but we still have these solid objects in here. Hey everyone, it's Mickey and I hope you're enjoying this video. I wanted to give away this game for free, so here you go. Check it out and if you like it, and if you're the first to grab the Steam key being shown here, add it to your account and play to your heart's content. The one thing I want to point out with these walls, if I go to the sprites, you can see that the origin is marked as top left. If I were to mark them, say, as in the middle, I would have to remove some of the padding to get them to line up with the grid. So I'm going to keep mine at the top left and just click the box. So if I'm clicking around, I don't accidentally, sorry, don't accidentally remove the origin part. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an enemy in, and we're going to add the enemy as event user zero. So again, other events we'll say event two i said two i meant zero so event user two we're going to add the enemy add enemy. so in here all i'm going to do is i'm going to look for an empty place that I haven't placed any walls yet so to do this i'm going to use a while well statement and right now we are making an infinite loop so you need to be very careful to these and you always need to have a way out so sometimes what i like to do is i like to say uh, the number of tries that i can do is five times if I don't do something in five times, then I exit out. But for now, we'll just use this way. So what we need to do is we need to grab a random cell position. And we did this in the first one over here where we figured out where we could place the solid square. So we can actually take this code and just copy it in. And now we need to convert these cells into pixels. And once again, we already did this in event one. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it right below, except instead of using the position XX, we'll use the X cell and Y cell. Now, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to check to see if our mask for the grid is gonna overlap our wall. Now, one thing that we might do is we wanna say set the sprite, or sorry, not the sprite, but the mask index to SPR wall, so that will give it the same mask 64 by 64. We could do that, um, but in this case, I don't think we need to do it because we're gonna be checking directly in the center. So what we're gonna say is if we 
do not have a place meeting, meaning that we're not overlapping something at the position X and position Y, and we're looking at anything for the object wall, then what I can do is I can create an instance. So instance create depth at the position X, position Y, and we want to create our enemy object. And then I want to make sure that I break out of this well statement. If I don't do that, then we're going to run into some problems. All right, I have an error here, number of arguments. So I need the depth and then that is it. Okay, so if we have called everything here, one, zero, excuse me, zero, one, and two, we should have our octopus in here and we have the blocks. So now what we need to do is we need to get our octopus to determine how he's going to get to our mouse coordinates. So to do this, we're going to go into the enemy and we're going to create a couple of different, uh, we're going to create a couple different things here. The very first thing is the create event. We're going to figure out how to actually path to the actual enemy. So in here, um, what we need to do is we need to start off with a path. So we'll say uh, path equals path add. So this variable we're going to continuously use. And it's basically like right clicking on path and saying create path. But we're doing it through the code. We also need a variable to say whether our enemy is moving. It's moving because we don't want the enemy to change the path while they are walking through. Okay, so in here we will go and create a step event. And we will say if the path does not equal no one, meaning that we actually have a path. And really, we don't really need to do that. So we'll move it out because we're creating it there. We're not destroying anything. We'll say if not is moving, then what we want to do is determine best mouse position. So in here, what we can do is we need to get the cell where our mouse is over. So we'll say VAR XL equals floor. And the reason we're using floor is because we always want to bring down. So we'll use the mouse X divided by the global cell size. And then the Y cell, it's going to be the same thing, but using the mouse Y. Now, once again, we need to take these cells and convert them into position for X and Y. We can come back up here and in user event two, let's just grab our position statements that we have. I would probably put this in a function, but we're just copying and pasting now. So the X cell and Y cell is going to be this. And also what I'm going to do here is uh, actually I will save that for later. We'll see what it looks like afterwards. Um, now we have to tell the grid that we're going to add this path in. So we'll say MP grid path and we're going to use our global dot grid and we're going to use the path that we have within this enemy here to create. And we'll say X plus, actually we'll just keep it as X and Y. So we're using the X and Y of the enemy. And then where do we want to stop? Well, we want to stop at the position X and position Y of our mouse. And then allow diagonal, we will say false. So if everything is looking correct, I guess the last thing we'll do here is we'll go draw and in the draw event we want to make sure that we draw that specific path so we also need to draw the octopus itself and then we'll say draw path draw the path of the x and y and the absolute value uh, will be true now if we do this uh, i don't have an octopus here so we have done something wrong we'll draw self draw the path here let's see um i think Oops, let me just try and run it one more time. Maybe I've run to a hiccup and I would have to fix that. All right, so he obviously appeared off the screen, so we can fix that later. So a couple of the issues that we're running into here is you can see that at the top left, that is where our path is actually starting. And when we move our mouse around, we are getting the top left of whatever grid we're on. So we're gonna have to add a little bit of padding into everything. So I could say, the X and Y position that we're going to end up with is going to be this plus the global dot cell size divided by two. And we will do that for this one as well. Make sure that we put our brackets in. And now let's see what that fixed. 
And really what we're going to do is we're just going to play with some of the padding here. So you can see that he's off the screen. I'd probably, I'd move him in one, but that's fine for now. So the other padding that we're going to need to do is in here where we have the positions. Oh, I am actually in the wrong place. So let's take this out and go into the enemy and paste it in here. I am sorry. I was not supposed to paste it in the grid in it. We want to paste it within the enemy. That's why it looks so weird. Um, I should also say if we run this now, we should see a little bit better pathing. So it's a little more straight. Now we just have to fix the actual enemy. So all we need to do here is at the X position plus 32, which is half our cell size and Y position plus 32, which is half our cell size. And let's see how this works now. And you can see that now everything is in the center and our pathing is working. So the only thing we need to do is we need to get this guy actually moving. So to do this, I will add an event and I will add a mouse global. And I'll say when the mouse left is released, then I want to say is moving. It's moving equals true. And now I want to start the path. So I'll say path start. Start with the path variable the speed of four and then the path action when we reach the end is going to be stop and whether it's absolute or not i want to say false because right now our path is directly on the center of our octopus so the last thing i want to do is if i go into let's see other and path edit then we'll say is moving equals false just so we can move again so if i hit f5 and I'm going to hit F5 again. Should probably fix that little error. We get our octopus here, and I'm going to move him to right here. So I click. You can see that it's following the path. And then when I get here, I can make a, another path. So you can see that the motion planning is working. And yeah, that is the basics of it. So yeah, that brings the tutorial to an end. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. You can see it's actually pretty easy to do. And this bad boy right here, the MP grid path, that is going to be your friend as well as we're going to look at the get cell and the add cell and we can't forget the mp grid to actually create it once you get those under your belt you'll be able to create pathing events and a star things uh, like crazy thanks for watching